Hi everyone, and welcome to installing Whitesource for GitHub.com. I'm Hannah, one of the technical support engineers here at Whitesource. Today I'll be going through the recommended workflow for installing our Whitesource for GitHub.com integration. All of the installation instructions that I'll be using can be found in our Whitesource for GitHub.com documentation. Before beginning the installation process, please check the prerequisites section of the documentation. The prerequisites include a user with admin privileges for your GitHub account and a user with admin privileges for your white source organization. Please note that the relationship between white source organizations and GitHub accounts are one-to-one. -one. If you have multiple GitHub accounts, you will need multiple white source organizations to complete the integration for each account. Now that we've discussed the prerequisites, let's get started. In preparation for the installation, log into both your Whitesource organization and your GitHub account. To begin the installation, you will need to access the Whitesource for GitHub.com application page. To do so, navigate to the Integrate tab, Developer Integrations, Whitesource for GitHub.com, and then install Whitesource for GitHub.com. Click Install, and then select which GitHub organization you would like to install the integration on. Then you have the option to choose all repositories or only select repositories. In this demo, I will start out by choosing one repository to onboard and click Install. This opens the registration page. You will then need to fill out all of the information. Next, you will need to generate a license key to enter into the registration form. To get the license key, navigate to the Whitesource UI, the Integrate tab, Developers Integrations, Whitesource for GitHub.com, and then click Generate License Key. Then copy the key and paste it into the form. Next, agree to the Terms of Service and Privacy Policy. Since I opted to onboard my demo repository, the onboarding process should already have started. The first step is that the integration creates a pull request to add the .whitesource configuration file to the root of the default branch of the repository. Once the pull request is merged, the configuration file is added to the repository and the first scan kicks off. In future, scans will kick off whenever this file is modified, or if a package manager file is modified, or if files are added or removed from the repository. Let's take a look at the .whitesource configuration file. The .whitesource configuration file controls the behavior of the whitesource for github.com integration. The default .whitesource file that is added to the onboarded repositories contains seven parameters to configure the behavior. There are more configuration options which you can review in the Whitesource for GitHub.com integration documentation. For this demo, I will be reviewing the seven parameters that are present in the configuration file by default. Under Scan Settings, there are Config Mode, Config External URL, Project Token, and Base Branches. Config Mode is used to instruct the integration on which unified agent parameters it should use. When set to auto, the integration scan uses the default parameter values. When set to local, the integration looks for a local whitesource.config file located in the root of the default branch of the repository. This file should contain unified agent parameters. When set to external, the integration looks for the configuration file at the location specified by the config external URL parameter. If your scan requires any configuration that differs from the default, we recommend that you use either the local or external config modes. To find more information on the default values, please visit the Unified Agent Configuration Parameters for Native Integrations documentation. The parameter project token can be used to send the scan results to a specific project that exists in your white source organization. The parameter base branches can be used to specify branches that should have their scan results stored in your white source organization. By default, all branches in an onboarded repository are scanned, but only the default branches results are visible in your white source organization. If you add other branch names to your base branches parameter, other branches results will be sent to your white source organization as well. Under check run settings, we have vulnerable check run conclusion level and display mode. Vulnerable check run conclusion level can be set to success or failure. When set to success, the white source security check will always return a success status even when the scan identifies vulnerabilities in your repository. When set to failure, the white source security check will return a failure status when the scan identifies vulnerabilities. Display mode instructs the integration on how to display white source security information for a scan performed on a non-base branch. 
When set to diff, only the difference of detected vulnerabilities between the current commit and its base branch commit will be displayed. When set to baseline, a summary of all detected vulnerabilities in the full repository inventory will be displayed. Under issue settings, there is the parameter min severity level. Min severity level enables users to decide what level of severity prompts the integration to report on the vulnerability in GitHub. This can be set to none, low, medium, or high. When set to none, no issues are created in GitHub. When set to low, all vulnerabilities generate an issue in GitHub. When set to medium, medium and high severity vulnerabilities generate issues in GitHub. When set to high, only high severity vulnerabilities generate issues in GitHub. Now that we have reviewed the .white source file, let's take a look at the scan results. To do so, navigate to the commit and click on the red X or green check and then click details. This will bring you to the white source for github.com security report. The security report includes information about any vulnerabilities found by the scan. It will include the CVE ID, severity, CVSS score, vulnerable library, suggested fix, and the link to the issue generated by the integration. It also displays the number of libraries scanned and a unique scan ID, which you can provide to the white source support team if you have questions about a particular scan. To view all of the issues generated by the integration during the scan, navigate to the Issues tab. Once the scan is complete, all of the results are also uploaded to your white source organization. When a repository is onboarded, a new product and project are added to the white source organization connected to the GitHub integration. The product and project follow the naming convention gh underscore repository name. As you can see here, the results are showing the same number of libraries as listed in the security report, and the UI contains an alert for each issue generated in the GitHub issue tab. Once an alert in the UI is resolved or ignored, the corresponding issue in GitHub is then closed. Now that we've completed our first scan, I will go over the recommended approach for managing your white source for github.com integrations configuration. We recommend that you use a global configuration repository to manage your configuration files. To start this process, you will need to create a repository named white source-config and add a readme file to the repository. The integration will look to this repository to obtain the configuration information that you normally would find in a .white source file. This allows you to centralize the configuration options in one repository so you can propagate changes to all of your repositories with one change instead of changing one .white source file per repository. Now that the white source config repository is created, you must onboard the white source config repository. This will prompt the integration to create a global config.json file and a repo config.json file. The global config.json file controls the integration's behavior when a repository is onboarded. You have three options, create onboarding PR, push white source file, or no white source file. When set to create onboarding PR, a pull request is generated to add a .white source file to the root of the default branch of the repository for each repository that is onboarded. This white source file will indicate that it inherits the configuration that you set in the repo config.json file. When set to push white source file, a dot white source file is automatically pushed to the root of the default branch of any repository that is onboarded. This white source file will also indicate that it inherits the configuration that you set in the repo config.json file. When set to no white source file, the repositories will inherit the configuration from the repo config.json file, and the integration will not look for a dot white source file in the default branch of the repository. Next, let's look at the repo config.json file. This file contains the same values that you would normally see in the .white source file. All repositories onboarded after creating a white source config repository will use the configuration found in the repo config.json file. Now let's onboard a repository using global configuration mode. Repository demo2 has not been onboarded and we'll use that as our demo for this global configuration mode.
As you can see, once we onboard the repository, a pull request is generated. Looking at the white source file generated for Demo2, you can see that it indicates that it inherits the configuration from the repo config.json file located in the white source config repository. Now that I have my first repository onboarded with global configuration, I'm all set. Any other repositories can be onboarded and will automatically inherit the configuration set in the white source config repository. If you've already onboarded GitHub repositories without first setting up your global configuration repository, there is a migration option to migrate existing onboarded repositories to use the global configuration. For more information, check out our documentation on global repo configuration. Thank you for watching Installing WhiteSource for GitHub.com. If you have any questions about this integration or have any trouble with the installation process, please reach out to WhiteSource support or your customer success manager. Thank you.